Welcome, welcome, welcome once again to Reddit Tech Where Today we are breaking down the AFC cell from top to bottom, going over key additions and subtractions once again, like we have been for the past couple divisions, and, you know, going over their key additions and seeing how each team will shake out this year. I think it's probably going to be like a three-team race. You know, probably can guess which team is going to be a, that fourth team that's out, but... Maybe they'll surprise. Maybe they'll surprise. But let, just let me know what you think down in the comments below. Some programming notes to note. And over the next couple weeks, I have three more division videos to make that'll be coming out in the next few weeks. And hopefully another career video before the start of the season. So look out for those. And let's get into the video. Starting off with the team that I think will finish in first, the Texans. I know they're the betting favorites. It just, they look like they have the best team. They look like they had the most reliable quarterback. And as far as additions go, I think they made a lot of really key additions that are going to help this team possibly go really far. But also they lost some players that could really hurt their defensive depth for sure. Now, the deal Hunter, probably the best pickup. I mean, he's been nothing but solid, great pass rushing for the Vikings for years. And him coming on, and the deal wasn't exorbitant, something they could totally weather totally worth every penny and he'll provide that inside pass rush that they've been looking for and pairing him with the additions of Danico Autry at the defensive tackle as well and Will Anderson coming through as well couldn't really help with their pass rush this year. Um, Stefan Dix, gotta be honest, he can be really good or he can blow up your team. I'm going to err on the side that he may be more problems than they're worth. No, they didn't make a weird decision. They voided the last three years of his deal. So I guess if he doesn't work out this year, he'll just, you know, go find another team. But if he does really well, he could get set himself for a really nice contract next year. Regardless, I I don't know. He's just kind of a cancer. He really is. He's a really gifted wide receiver. He's one of the best wide receivers in the league. If he wasn't such a head case, like a lot of wide receivers, they just, they get in their heads all the time that they're just the best and that if they don't get their way, you know. And I mean, look at, uh, in Buffalo, he did really well in Buffalo, but ultimately I think it was not, he didn't make Josh Allen better. Josh Allen got better and worked well with, um, Stephon Diggs. I think the same thing's going to happen in Houston. He'll probably initially help out, uh. CJ Stroud a little bit, but ultimately CJ Stroud will be able to stand on his own, and Stefan Diggs could benefit as a result. Just he needs to be a team player, he needs to not, not be an idiot, and they can go really far with him this year. Joe Mixon, again, great addition. He, he, you know, he can run, you know, he can block, you know, he can receive. He's one of the better multifaceted running backs in the league, and I think he's going to be a low grade steal for them this year, and I think he'll be a more reliable running back than uh, Singletary when they had last year and my god I forgot the guy that they hit behind him I'm sorry I'm sorry he's a guy that I thought would be really good but now I think uh, Joe Mixon will be firmly number one running back this year and now let's go over their losses Blake Cashman, Boyd Collins, Jonathan Grenard all will be will be huge losses for them in the middle of the defense Time will tell if they will be really affect them all that much. But I think in the middle, those losses could hurt them a lot. They do have, and they didn't add some nice pieces. Like I said, over this uh, off season, pairing with Will Anderson and others. But time will tell how much those losses will affect them. But overall, I think the Titans probably or the Texans probably have the t the best of twelve and five record. At worst, maybe um, nine and eight. I think that's probably the worst. I think they're firmly set up to win the division, but I think the other team behind them will give them a big run for their money as well. And that is the Colts. Now they have a great team, or they barely missed the playoffs last year, if not for that <laughs> drop pass at the end of the game. But I mean, considering what the Colts went through last year, losing Anthony Richardson and working with Gardner Minshew for the rest of the year, I'd say they did pretty well. Shane Sykin is a good 
coach, and I think he'll really help develop Anthony Richardson going forward. Um, Wayatu Latu will be a great addition. Drafted 15th overall, first defensive player drafted in this draft, and although he has that injury risk because he technically medically retired for a little bit but came back, he looked great. He is going to help their pass rush so much. But, and then add on Adonai Mitchell, will be a great secondary receiver as well, along with Michael Pitt, Pittman, Josh Downs, Alec Pierce. They have a really good wide receiving core that will help them a lot this year. And if Anthony Richardson can utilize his big arm, his athletic ability, his ability to get out and on the run, find those guys wide open down the field, I think that will really help them. Pairing that with a, with a slowly improving offensive line and um, the, the Jonathan Taylor that looks ready to burst out like he did a couple years ago, their offense looks really set to shine. Now it all revolves around Anthony Richardson. If he can avoid injury this year, they're going to win a lot of games. If he can't, then you really start to question if he um, really has the ability to really have a prolonged healthy career because he already injured himself last year because of his play style, shoulder injury. Um, I think he'll be better off this year. I think, I think as far as I know, he's free and clear from that injury. But, you know, his physical play style eventually does catch up. Will eventually catch up. And, you know, I think he does have the big body to withstand most of that. But because he's or out on the run, there's always a chance he could get clocked and really suffer another big injury. And they don't need him to suffer another injury. They need him to stay healthy. And if he, like I said, if he can stay healthy, they're going to win a lot of games. Um, their losses, Zach Moss, time will tell if uh, his loss will be that much. I think he'll be a nice addition for the Bengals. But time will tell how big of a loss they'll lose. It's just because... Jonathan Taylor was hurt again last year, but if Jonathan Taylor can stay healthy for most of the year, they should be just fine. And losing Gardner Minshew, yeah, it's a loss of a secondary quarterback, but they they signed Joe Flacco, who who knows, last year was an aberration, and should Anthony Richardson get hurt again, if he can step in there again, time will tell. But I think the Colts look really strong. The only thing about them, now, they did make some key re-signings. Zayer Franklin at linebacker would be nice. Michael Pittman had to re-sign him. He's their number one wide receiver. And Kenny Moore are a nice cornerback as well. But they they missed out on Legereus Sneed. So they're really missing something in that secondary. So if anything's going to hurt them this year, it's going to be the secondary. I think they're really going to lean on their offense to really get them a lot of wins. And hopefully that the defense can do enough good. Wayatulatu will really help that defense along, but you, you we're going to have a gimme an Achilles keel for the Colts this year. It's going to be their secondary. It's probably going to be their secondary, but their offense should be strong. And when it's all said and done, I think their overall record at best will be ooh, 11 and 6. I think they I think they could feasibly do that if everything goes out right. Uh, worst Probably eight, nine, seven, ten. I think this division is they're gonna beat up on each other a lot, but I think they have a really good shot to win it. I just think, especially if Anthony Richardson can't stay healthy, I just don't see them having a real shot at, at beating the Texans when it's all all said and done. I don't see them really giving them a good run for the money if the, their real offensive Superman Anthony Richardson is not not out there. But time will tell think they finish in second they have a good shot at the playoffs if they make it in second the Jags now they made some good additions as well but they lost some key, key pieces as well Mitch Morse nice veteran presence at center played with Doug Peterson in the past uh, Darnell Savage I've said a lot about Darnell Savage that I never thought he was all that good for the Packers he had his good moments but he played well enough again, I guess, at the end of the year to get him a nice payday in Jacksonville. Uh, Ronald Darby will come in to replace Garrus Williams. Well, time will tell if that's really an upgrade. Probably only a moderate upgrade, just a little bit. 
era composite, I think, is a really key piece for them this year. No one seems to be talking about Eric Armstead. I mean, he his uh, lack of presence on in San Francisco will affect them a lot, and I think the Jaguars will definitely benefit from his experience in the middle. I think he'll be great for them. Pairing him along with Trayvon Walker and Josh Allen, that, that can be a formidable pass rush. Um, Gabe Davis, or looks like to be good. Another good wide receiver added on. Devon, Devin DuVarnay will be a great one as well. And Brian Thomas looks to be a future star already. He's already making plays in the preseason. He's probably going to be uh, Trevor's number one option. Let's go over there. Losses, Calvin Ridley. Yeah, it sucks to lose him, but he was 29, so time will tell if he's really um, going to continue doing what he did last year in Tennessee. Um, Rayshon Jenkins will be a decent loss at, at safety. Foley Fultukazi, I remember when he got signed and never really heard of him, and so never really heard much of him even with the Jags. Uh, like I said, Darius Williams is being replaced by Dar- Dar- Ronald Darby. Um Overall, Calvin Ridley will probably be the biggest loss, but they've added in a lot of wide receivers that, uh, as single singular units, aren't that great. But as a combined uh, wide receiver, make up a decent wide receiver pairing, I suppose. The thing for the Jags will come down to, of course, Trevor Lawrence. Now he got paid. Now it was time for him to shut up and get down to work. He needs to prove that he can be. The true starting quarterback everybody thought he could coming out of uh, um, college after winning two national championships. He needs to come out and play well. He really does. 33 fumbles in three years is not good. You need to, s- to slow down on the fumbles. That's going to catch up to. Certainly caught up with Daniel Jones. Now, I'm not saying that um, Trevor Lawrence is as bad of a quarterback as Daniel Jones, but let's be honest. He's been middling to good. He hasn't been great. He hasn't had that one great season. And this year, it, it's all on him. He really needs to shine this year. Because while they do have a good-looking pass rushing unit this year, like a lot of teams, their secondary is going to kill them. It could very well kill them in the end. So, they're, again, this is another team that's leaning on their offense. Of course, uh, Evan Ingram is still there, but... Let's be honest, he is a middling tight end that has the potential to have really good moments, but he does drop balls a lot, like he always has in his career, and he's getting up there in eight in years. They have a lot of good pass ro- catchers to throw to. It's just Trevor's got to find him, and he's got to have a good game. He's got to have 30-plus touchdowns. He's got to have a 4,000-yard season. He needs to have something like that, otherwise you really start to wonder if uh, what he had in college, he just hasn't translated the NFL. It's clear that that hasn't happened yet. But I still think he can do it. He definitely can. He definitely has all the tools necessary to do it. He People call him sunshine for a reason. He can shine through and be a good quarterback in the NFL. It's just time will tell if he can finally realize that sky-high potential and finally get to where he needs to be. But last but not least, we have the Titans who, like I said, made some good edit or additions, but at what cost? I mean, they had a Calvin Ridley and LeJarrius Sneed, two good players for sure, but had a, com- had a nearly combined $100 million in guaranteed money for Calvin Ridley, who's 29, and LeJarrius Sneed, who had injury issues last year and has kind of had injuries throughout his career. Now, both are really good players, and both could really have good moments, but... They're going to a team with a not-so-great offensive line. Now, J.C. Latham is a huge man. He is a monster, and it'll be great on the right-hand side for them for years to come. And they had in Tony Pollard, who will pair well with Ty J. Spears. I've made it a point in my other videos that I think Ty J. Spears could be a real steal and fancy, could be a potential top 15 running back by the end of the year when it's all said and done, but... Tony Pollard has the potential to vulture away a lot of touchdowns and get in those good goal line situations. I think he'll be a sneaky good addition for them. They'll have two a nice uh, one-two pairing. They won't have a bona fide number one. I don't think 
either Ty J Spears or Tony Powell will be that bona fide number one like Derrick Henry was. I mean, you can't replace Derrick Henry. You just can't. You, you cannot lose that or replace that. Um, then you go Autry that lost him. That, that was a lot, of, a lot of punch in the center of the defense. Uh, like I said, Henry gone. Aziz El Shair will be a decent loss in the linebacking core, but the Titans will need to see uh, if Will Levis is the real deal. Now, we had some moments last year for sure, but they are overcoming the loss of uh, DeAndre Hopkins, who, from what I remember seeing, he, he'll probably be back week six, week seven, something like that, who'll miss at least the first couple of seasons or weeks in the season. Um, so they have guys that will need to step up for sure. Um, they have some good guys in the receiving core. <laughs> God damn, I can't remember the names. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Did not do well, as good a research as I should have for them. Will Levis is still could be the real deal. Just a matter of can he see, soar through his sky high potential. But, um, yeah, I don't think there's a lot of hope for the Titans this year. Probably, at best, finish five wins. If all things go well, five wins, maybe six. But I think they're more likely to finish at four and 13, three and um, 14, something like that. I mean, I don't have a lot of hope for them. They've made some pieces, they've got some pieces, and that could certainly help them. But who knows if Will Levis is that guy to bring it all together on the offensive side. Good, or a good one-two punch at running back. A decent improving offensive line with a nice, huge, decent J.C. Latham. But time will tell. I just don't think the Titans should really have any shot to win the division. And when it's all, all said and done, I think it'll be a big two-way race between the Texans and the Colts. The Jags do have a chance to sneak in and win the division, but it's just... Their secondary could very well be their Achilles heel. Again, for the Colts, Anthony Richardson, if he can't stay healthy, they're not going to win the division. And C.J. Stroud, I think, will be fine this year. I mean, there is always that dreaded sophomore slump. I don't think you have to worry about that much. I think last year he showed that he can be a top five quarterback for years to come. He has all the tools in the world. But they're going to be playing tougher competition. Last year they had one of the uh, easiest schedules in the league, so they definitely benefited that, from that. So I think this year will be a real test for uh, the Texans on if they last year was a fluke or a start of something greater. But let me know what you think down in the comments below. Uh, I still got three more divisions to go. The NFC East, the AFC East, and the AFC West. So I got three more divisions to go. A, another career video. I think the last poll that I put out had uh, Ray Lewis winning. So I'll be talking about him. And yes, his uh, senior positions of his career. But uh, let me know what you think. Uh, I enjoy breaking down these divisions for you. I enjoy giving my takes and everything. So give it a like. Share it. Subscribe. All of that. But have a great day. And as always, God bless.